Gazebo by Raymond Carver. That morning, she pours teachers over my belly and licks it off. That afternoon, she tries to jump out the window. I go, Holly, this can't continue. This has got to stop. We are sitting on the sofa in one of the upstairs suites. There were any number of vacancies to choose from, but we needed a suite, a place to move around in and be able to talk. So we'd locked up the motel office that morning and gone upstairs to a suite. She goes, Dwayne, this is killing me. We are drinking teachers with ice and water. We'd slept a while between morning and afternoon. Then she was out of bed and threatening to climb out the window in her undergarments. I had to get her in a hold. We were only two floors up, but even so. I've had it, she goes. I can't take it anymore. She puts her hand to her cheek and closes her eyes. She turns her head back and forth and makes this humming noise. I could die seeing her like this. Take what? I go, though of course I know. I don't have to spell it out for you again. She goes. I've lost control. I've lost pride. I used to be a proud woman. She's an attractive woman just past 30. She's tall and has long black hair and green eyes. The only green-eyed woman I'd have ever known. In the old days, I used to say things about her green eyes, and she'd tell me it was because of them. She knew she was meant for something special. And didn't I know it? I feel so awful from one thing and the other. I can hear the telephone ringing downstairs in the office. It's been ringing off and on all day. Even when I was dozing, I could hear it. I'd open my eyes and look at the ceiling and listen to it ring and wonder at what was happening to us. But maybe I should be looking at the floor. My heart is broken, she goes. It's turned to a piece of stone. I'm no good. That's what's as bad as anything, that I'm no good anymore. Holly, I go. When we'd first moved down here and taken over as managers, we thought we were out of the woods. Free rent, free utilities, plus 300 a month. You couldn't beat it with a stick. Holly took care of the books. She was good with figures, and she did most of the renting of the units. She liked people, and people liked her back. I saw to the grounds, mowed the grass and cut the weeds, kept the swimming pool clean, did the small repairs. Everything was fine for the first year. I was holding down another job nights, and we were getting ahead. We had plans. Then one morning, I don't know, I had just laid some bathroom tile in one of the units when this little Mexican maid comes in to clean. It was Holly had hired her. I can't really say I'd noticed the little thing before, though we spoke when we saw each other. She called me, I remember, Mr. Anyway, one thing and the other. So after that morning, I started paying attention. She was a neat little thing with fine white teeth. I used to watch her mouth. She started calling me by my name. One morning I was doing a washer for one of the bathroom faucets and she came in and turns on the TV as maids are like to do, while they clean, that is. I stopped what I was doing and stepped outside the bathroom. She was surprised to see me, but she smiled and said my name. It was right after she said it that we got down on the bed. Holly, you're still a proud woman, I go. You're still number one. Come on, Holly. She shakes her head. Something's died in me, she goes. It took a long time for it to do it, but it's dead. You've killed something, like you took an axe to it, and everything is dirt now. She finishes her drink, then she begins to cry. I make to hug her, but it's no good. I freshen our drinks and look out the window. Two cars with out-of-state plates are parked in front of the office, and the drivers are standing at the door, talking. One of them finishes saying something to the other, 
and looks around at the units and pulls his chin. There's a woman there too, and she has her face up to the glass, hands shielding her eyes, peering inside. She tries the door. The phone downstairs begins to ring. Even a while ago, when we were doing it, you were thinking of her. Holly goes, Dwayne, this is hurtful. She takes the drink I give her. Holly, I go. It's true, Dwayne, she goes. Just don't argue with me, she goes. She walks up and down the room in her underpants and her brassiere, her drink in her hand. Holly goes, you've gone outside the marriage. It's trust that you killed. I get down on my knees and I start to beg, but I am thinking of Juanita. This is awful. I don't know what's going to happen to me or anyone else in the world. I go, Holly, honey, I love you. In the lot, someone leans on a horn, stops, and then leans again. Holly wipes her eyes. She goes, fix me a drink. This one's too watery. Let them blow their stinking horns. I don't care. I'm moving to Nevada. Don't move to Nevada, I go. You're talking crazy, I go. I'm not talking crazy, she goes. Nothing's crazy about Nevada. You can stay here with your cleaning woman. I'm moving to Nevada. Either there or I kill myself. Holly, I go. Holly, nothing, she goes. She sits on the sofa and draws her knees up to under her chin. Fix me another pop, you son of a bitch, she goes. She goes, and fuck those horn blowers. Let them do their dirt in the travel lodge. Is that where your cleaning woman cleans now? Fix me another drink, you son of a bitch. She sets her lips and gives me her special look. Drinking's funny. When I look back on it, all our important decisions have been figured out when we were drinking. Even when we talked about having to cut back on our drinking, we'd be sitting at the kitchen table or out at the picnic table with a six-pack or whiskey. When we made up our minds to move down here and take this job as managers, we sat up a couple nights drinking while we weighed the pros and cons. I pour the last of the teachers into our glasses and add cubes and a spill of water. Holly gets off the sofa and stretches out across the bed. She goes, Did you do it to her in this bed? I don't have anything to say. I feel all out of words inside. I give her the glass and sit down in the chair. I drink my drink and think it's not ever going to be the same. Dwayne, she goes. Holly. My heart has slowed. I wait. Holly was my own true love. The thing with Juanita was five days a week between the hours of 10 and 11. It was in whatever unit she was in when we were when she was making her cleaning rounds. I'd just walk in where she was working and shut the door behind me. But mostly, it was in 11. It was 11 that was our lucky room. We were sweet with each other, but swift. It was fine. I think Holly could maybe have weathered it out. I think the thing she had to do was really give it a try. Me, I held on to the night job. A monkey could do that work. But things here were going downhill fast. We just didn't have the heart for it anymore. I stopped cleaning the pool. It filled up with green gick so that the guests wouldn't use it anymore. I didn't fix any more faucets or lay any more tile or do any of the touch-up painting. Well, the truth is we were both hitting it pretty hard. Booze takes a lot of time and effort if you're going to do a good job with it. Holly wasn't registering the guests right either. She was charging too much or else not collecting what she should. Sometimes she'd put three people to a room with only one bed in it, or else she'd put a single in where the bed was a king size. I tell you, there were complaints. And sometimes there were words. Folks would load up and go somewhere else. The next thing, there's a letter from the management people. 
then another certified. There's telephone calls. There's someone coming down from the city. But we had stopped caring, and that's a fact. We knew our days were numbered. We had fouled up our lives, and we were getting ready for a shakeup. Holly's a smart woman. She knew it first. Then that Saturday morning, we woke up after a night of rehashing the situation. We opened our eyes and turned in bed to take a good look at each other. We both knew it then. We'd reached the end of something, and the thing was to find out where new to start. We got up and got dressed, had coffee, decided on this talk, without nothing interrupting, no calls, no guests. That's when I got the teachers. We locked up and came upstairs here with ice, glasses, bottles. First off, we watched the color TV and frolicked some and let the phone ring away downstairs. For food, we went out and got cheese crisps from the machine. There was this funny thing of anything could happen now that we realized everything had. When we were just kids before we married, Holly goes, when we had big plans and hopes, you remember? She was sitting on the bed, holding her knees and her drink. I remember Holly. You weren't my first love, you know. My first was Wyatt. Imagine, Wyatt. And your name's Dwayne. Wyatt and Dwayne. Who knows what I was missing all those years. You were my everything. Just like the song. I go, you're a wonderful woman, Holly. I know you've had the opportunities. But I didn't take them up on it. She goes. I could go outside the marriage. Holly, please, I go. No more now, honey. Let's not torture ourselves. What is it we should do? <laughs> Listen, she goes. <laughs> you remember the time we drove out to that old farm place outside of Yukima, <laughs> out past Terrace Heights? We were just driving around. We were on this little dirt road and it was hot, dusty. We kept going and came to that old house and you asked if we could have a drink of water. Can you imagine us doing that now? Going up to a house and asking for a drink of water? Those old people must be dead now, she goes. Side by side out there in some cemetery. I remember they asked us in for cake. And later on, they showed us around. <laughs> and there was this gazebo there out back. It was out back under some trees. It had a little peaked roof and the paint was gone. And there were these weeds growing up over the steps. <laughs> and the woman said that years before, I mean, a real long time ago, men used to come around and play music out there on a Sunday. And the people would sit and listen. I thought we'd be like that, too, when we got old enough, dignified and in a place, and people would come to our door. I can't say anything just yet. Then I go, Holly, these things, we'll look back on them, too. We'll go, remember the motel with all the crud in the pool? I go, you see what I'm saying, Holly? But Holly just sits there on the bed with her glass. I can see she doesn't know. I move over to the window and look out from behind the curtain. Someone says something below and rattles the door to the office. I stay there. I pray for a sign from Holly. I pray for Holly to show me. I hear a car start, then another. They turn on their lights against the building and one after the other, they pull away and go out into the traffic. Dwayne, Holly goes. In this, too, she was right. 